Hey there, chemists. Um, in this unit, we're going to look at how chemists determine the structures of molecules. We've been drawing molecules all year, but how do chemists analyze molecules and actually determine what the structure of something is? Uh, for example, this is the strychnine molecule that there's a picture of up here. And the actual molecule in real life doesn't look anything like our picture. This is just how we represent those atoms. Uh, strychnine is just a, a white solid if you look at it. So how do chemists learn that this is the structure? Uh, we do this for compounds that exist naturally, but also if you're making something in a laboratory, you need to determine what it is that you formed. And there's many ways to do this, and they usually have to work in concert to determine an actual structure. It's a very daunting task. In this course, we're just going to learn about a couple of techniques uh, in our next few days together, namely uh, what's called MS, which stands for mass spectrometry. That's what we'll focus on today. And mass spectrometry answers essentially the question, what molar mass? How heavy is the molecule? And we know how to interpret line structures that if we were tasked with figuring out how many carbons, nitrogens, and hydrogens are are in this particular molecule. You could count them up. It would be C21, H22, N2, and O2. And if you add that up and round to the nearest whole number, you get about 334 uh, grams per mole. So a mass spec of strychnine would give us an output of something around that. That obviously doesn't determine that this is how it's all put together. There's many isomers with this formula that would have that same molar mass, but that's one technique we can use to combine with others. Uh, later on, we'll learn about what's called IR, which stands for infrared spectroscopy. The word spectroscopy means how light interacts with matter, and it essentially answers the question, what bonds? what types of bonds are in a molecule. So an IR spectrum of the strychnine molecule would show us the carbon-oxygen double bond, the carbon-carbon double bond, uh, arguably the, the carbon-nitrogen single bond or other types of bonds. There, there's lots of bonds in this molecule. There's carbon-oxygen double, there's carbon-carbon double, there's carbon nitrogen, carbon oxygen, carbon carbon, and obviously carbon H. And we would see those in an IR spectrum. And then we would not see things that, that are not there. Uh, for example, there's no OH bond anywhere in this molecule. So we would not see a stretch for that. Thirdly, the one we're going to spend the most amount of time, but not for a couple of lessons from now, is called NMR. That stands for nuclear magnetic resonance. And that answers essentially what arrangement of atoms. And we're going to get into NMR very specifically uh, in a couple of lessons from now, and we'll just explain more of it when we get there. But in this video, we're going to look specifically at mass spectrometry. So here are four models that have very different architectures and different molar masses. And below them are the four mass spectra that go with them, but they're all mixed up. So we're going to match which one goes with which. So if we were doing this in the lab and we actually had it as a matching exercise, we would need to know how much each of these molecules weighs, which means I need the molecular formula. So the first one, the amide, is C5H11NO. Uh, and every chemist knows carbon is roughly 12, H1, nitrogen 14, and oxygen 16. So when I add all that up, I get a molar mass of around 101 gram per mole. Uh, and if you go and do the other three, the ester right next to it would be C6, H12, O2, weighing in at 116. The nitrile would be C7, H5, N, weighing in at 103. And then the last one, unique molecule with all fluorines, no hydrogens, is C3F6O, uh, adding up to 166. So those molar masses, uh, in an ideal case, would be seen in the mass spectrum. Let's just zoom in on the very first one and see if we can figure it out. 
if you look all the way to the right, this 116, right below where it says like m dot, that's the radical of the mass spectrum. The highest number is called the parent peak. It's the highest number recorded. The way mass spectrometry works is a molecule is ionized uh, so that it can be detected. In other words, it's given a charge uh, and it's turned into most often a radical cation and then different mass different massed ions are detected by the instrument. The conditions of the instrument are such that we often can detect the whole molecule itself. And that's actually enough information to say, oh, this, this is the ester. There it is, 116. So I'll just draw the structure of the ester right on the spectrum and put a box around it, labeling the spectrum with that structure. But you should be asking yourself, what's up with all these other peaks? Why are there so many other things seen in the mass spectrum? Well, the conditions of the experiment are usually enough to fragment the molecule. So we could actually break bonds between covalently bonded atoms in the molecule, and you'll see fragments of those. 101 is exactly 15 less than 116, so the molecule lost a CH3 group, which means maybe we broke the methyl off of that bond, or perhaps one of the methyls in the T-butyl. And then you're left with, I'll draw the fragment molecule. It would be something like that with, let's say, a radical on the oxygen. That would weigh, if I added up that, that should weigh 101. Uh, likewise, you know, if I look at this really tall peak, the tallest peak, by the way, is called the base peak. And that's just the one that shows up in the most abundance. So it's given a value of 100% uh, intensity, and everything else is just relative to that. But it has no bearing, uh, for, the, for our purposes for now, on, on how significant uh, or just what the structure is, just how the instrument works. All we're concerned with is the numerical values that show up in the spectrum. In this case of 57, we could even try to make sense of it uh, as being a, a T-butyl group. C57 is exactly C4H9, so that could be a, a T-butyl broken off. So hit pause and just go ahead and match the other three with the spectra uh, that are down below by just looking at the molar mass and maybe identifying a fragment here and there. Okay, if I look at the one uh, in the lower left, let's just go down around this uh, counterclockwise, I see a peak at 101 that corresponds to the amid. So I'll draw the amid right on top. And if I wanted to identify some stuff, uh, I could imagine where this 59 came from. You could do what's called an alpha cleavage by breaking the covalent bond uh, right there and then you would get a piece that weighs 59. We're not going to identify all the fragments. That's something that mass spectrometry specialists can do. We're really just concerned with looking at the parent peak and finding the molecule. In the upper right, uh, this 103 matches the nitrile. So that's got to be the benzonitrile. Uh, this peak here with one extra is probably just it picking up a hydrogen ion somehow. That's why it is one higher. And lastly, the 166 must be the ketone. So that works all fine and well if we have uh, no structures and we're just trying to do a matching game, which is what you're going to keep doing. On the back are some homework problems that match molecules with their mass spectra, but we've been given them now just as names. So we need the structure of each one, the molar, the molecular formula, and then the molar mass. So the first one, 2-methylhexane, that's a hexane 2, 4, 6, with a methyl and carbon 2. And if I fill in its molar mass, it would be C7H16, weighing in at 100 grams per mole. So now you have a big task ahead of you, hit the pause button, and go ahead and do the same for all the others, figuring out their structures, formulas, and molar masses. Okay, if you want to check, diethylmethylamine, that's an amine with two ethyls and a methyl. That's C, that's going to be C5H13N, uh, weighing 87. One bromobutane is a 
butane with a bromine on one end, that's C4H9Br, adds up to 137. One butanol, similar, but has an OH on the end, that's going to be C4H10O, uh, adds up to 74. Chlorine, remember that's diatomic, weighs about 71. I'm going to the nearest whole number for most of these. Pentane, just five carbons in a chain, that's C5H12, weighs 72. Uh, ethanol, very simple little molecule, C2H6O, uh, which weighs 46. Uh, butane, C4H10, weighs 58. Uh, three pentanone, that's a five carbon ketone with a ketone right in the middle. Give me C5. H10O, that should add up to 86. And then bromine, another diatomic, weighs about 160. So that's a great way to start because then if you flip to the back, you now have several spectra to match with those 10 molecules, uh, keeping in mind that the parent peak should be what we see for the molar mass. So that's how chemists use mass spectrometry to start to identify something about a molecule. It basically answers, what's the molar mass?